This is the AutoCAD 2012 interface. First I'm going to start here up at the top right here where this big red A is. That is the application button. I'll select the application button and we have here start a new project, open an existing project, save a project, save a project as a new name. We'll jump down here to drawing utilities. Under drawing utilities, units is probably the thing that will be considered most in here. If I go into units, it brings up the drawing units. Here is where you select the units of desire. Architectural, decimal, engineering. You can set your precision. If it's in architecture, the precision looks this way. If you're in decimal, the precision looks this way. You can set your type of angle. Uh, decimal degrees. Degrees, minutes, seconds, gradients, radians. And the decimal degrees, your precision looks this way and your degrees, minutes, seconds, your precision looks this way. Gradients, that's your precision. So here's where you're making a decision on what things you want set up. Here, some people believe that you can switch back and forth between metric and inches. This is the insertion scale, units to scale inserted content. So this doesn't change the drawing units. If you are wanting to be in millimeters, if you haven't started a metric template, you cannot switch to a metric template. Here is the direction of measuring and angles. If I go into here, the engineering standard for measuring and angles starts in the east direction or at 3 o'clock is where 0 degrees starts. And you can change that if you so like. We'll switch that back to decimal degrees and we'll hit OK here. I'm going to go back into the application button, open up the application menu. Here's the options button, which opens up the options dialog box. Here there are a lot of settings that you can set under display. This controls the crosshair size, which I like to control. Under user preferences, the right click customization, which allows the, the right click of the mouse to act as an enter. And 3D modeling, here I turn this 2D wireframe visual style off, which is the 3D cube. And I like to have that turned off we're working in 2D. There's all many, many other settings that you can set in here and you'll learn those as you move forward. This right here is the quick access toolbar along the top here. Also here is begin a new drawing, open an existing drawing, save a drawing, save a drawing as a different name, print. Here is undo and redo. They will become your best friends as you work through this. Right here is your drafting workspaces. We are currently in the drafting and annotation workspace. The old way AutoCAD looked is the AutoCAD Classic. Here's how that used to look with no ribbon and these toolbars with the icons on them. This is the 3D modeling workspace. This is the 3D basics workspace. And we'll switch it back to the Drafting and Annotation Workspace, which is the current 2012 standard in AutoCAD. Over here is the keyword search. If you need help in any way, there are search applications that can happen here. If you type this keyword in, it will give you information on how to accomplish what you're interested in getting information on. If you hit the question mark here, this, this opens up Autodesk Exchange, which is just a different way of doing a search help. This area right here is called the ribbon. Right here are the tabs that open up the different ribbons within AutoCAD. In each ribbon there is a panel. This is the draw panel and the draw panel they have icons that make up the tools. This is the line tool, the polyline tool. This is the modify panel with the modify icons or tools in that. This is the layers. This is annotation. Annotation is text, dimensions, leaders, tabulation blocks. Here is the object snap panel and these icons under the object snap panel allow you to snap to existing features when you're trying to accomplish work. The insert ribbon opens up a different set of panels with different icons and there are many of these tabs that open up different ribbons. The express tools tab, interesting one here, this is 
AutoCAD users who have the ability to customize AutoCAD into the way that they like. They have put together a conglomeration of these customizations that have become very, very popular over time. Here is running text along an arc. This here is combining move, copy, and rotate all into one button. And there's other great icons that can be used that have been developed. This is our working area, the workspace. The thing that's moving around in the workspace that you see here is the cursor. The cursor is made up of the crosshairs and the pick box, which is the box at the intersection of the crosshairs. I'm going to draw a few lines on here so because I'm going to make use of those as I'm showing the functions of the mouse buttons. So I'm going to select the line icon, I'm going to draw some lines, and you'll notice here that as I'm drawing I have some dynamic input that is showing this giving me the length of the line, the angle of the line, and in that other gray box it says specify next point, which is telling you what it, AutoCAD is asking for next. That is the specify next point is also down here in the command line, which we'll get to later. So I'm going to draw a few lines on here. I'm going to draw some circles to have some kind of feature on here that we can work with. Now that we have something here, I can show you the functions of the mouse. If I roll the roller on the mouse, it gives me zoom. If I push the roller like a button without rolling the roller, I can pan. If I right click quickly, it repeats last command. If I right click slowly and hold that button down, it brings up the right click menu. And the left click is how you select objects. There's an implied windowing that's called. You'll notice here as I select something, there is a blue box. If I go left to right, if I go right to left, it's a green box with a dotted window around it. This is a crossing window. This is a window. When you select something with a window, everything has to be completely within it. When you select something with a crossing window, whatever that thing touches, it will select. Here is the model and layout tabs. Currently we are in model space. If I switch to paper space, I have here a digital representation of a piece of paper that has been dragged or placed over the top of our model. When we draw in model space, we can draw something as small as five thousandths of an inch to something that's 500 miles in size. We always draw full scale, but when we're going to print something on a piece of paper, we have to get that to fit at a proper scale. So I have drug a digital piece of paper over my model. Now to see my model, I need to take figuratively speaking, a digital pair of scissors and I need to cut a hole into my paper so that I can see through to my model. Now you'll notice here that this indicates paper space. When I double click inside of the viewport, which is what that is called, I am now in model space as indicated here. You'll notice that I can also zoom and pan as well. I can now specify my scale. We'll take this to one to one. It doesn't quite fit. I'll take it to one to two. And now we have a specified scale in here. You'll notice in this scale, there's also the architectural options for a 16th of an inch equals a foot, 64th of an inch equals a foot, examples like that. And that is how we are able to get something as big as 500 miles in size to fit on a piece of paper is by the zoom scale. I'm going to move down here to the command line now. The command line is where you can see all the work that is being accomplished. You'll notice that if I select line, it will specify line down here in the command line. It's telling you what you need to do next. If I specify move, it says move and tells you what you need to do next. It keeps a history of everything that you've done in this command line. In order to see that history, I can either drag this up here to show my history, or easier yet, I can hit F2 on the keyboard and it will bring up my AutoCAD text window or the history of everything that is happening. This is my coordinate axis. You know, this represents zero, 00 in the model space world. If we were in 3D, we would also see the Z direction as well. If you look down here in the coordinates window right here, you'll notice it tells us exactly where we are in AutoCAD space. Right now you're seeing positive numbers because I'm staying on the positive side of the X and Y coordinate. But you'll notice if I get down here 
you'll notice that there are negative values in front of the coordinate locations. One thing I forgot to mention is that in the ribbon here, if we hover over an icon, it brings up a tooltip. If we hover longer, it brings up an example how that icon works. And each one of these icons give you that option. When we need to start a metric or an imperial drawing, if we come up here into new, it brings up a template that we can select from. This right here is the imperial template, and this right here, AutoCAD ISO, is the metric template. Once you're in one of these, you can't switch back and forth, and so you have to look at your drawing and look at the units that you're going to be working in and know whether that's a metric or an imperial drawing that needs to be accomplished. It's something that's very important to remember. But right down here is the application status bar. Uh, we've talked about the coordinate locations there. These icons here are options that you can turn on and off for different functions within AutoCAD. Uh, here is the grid on and off and you can see the grid displayed. This is snapping to the grid. Here is our object snap on and off. You can turn the dynamic input and that's what shows up when you're drawing the lines telling you the length and the angles of your lines. So these are options that you can turn on or off according to your desires. Here this indicates model space or paper space. This scale here is the scale for the annotation features or your text, dimensions, and notes. Right here, this gear icon is the workspace switching as well as being up here. Now, this concludes the AutoCAD interface introduction.